Hey guys, so in the past few weeks we've talked uh, a little bit about additive and FM synthesis in alchemy. So I thought it would be cool to actually combine the two for today. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit import on source A. And um, in this drop zone here I'll throw one of the apple loops. I'll choose the guitar finger picking kind of loop. Um, I'll choose additive mode here and I'll um, analyze the formants as well. Make sure the mapping is set to pitch and then I hit import. Um, when you do this, uh, Alchemy will analyze the sound and um, you can see the results of that in the edit window right here. We can see all of the partials, um, which are a lot, and each of them has an individual envelope for the volume, the tuning, and the panning. So um, that's a lot of data to work with, but luckily we don't, we don't really have to use this here. I can see some weird pitch thing happening there. Um, Another thing it's doing is that it will automatically set up an LFO to control the position. And this LFO is synced, so that way this loop will always run in sync with your host. So there's that weird pitch thing. Uh, that actually happens a lot in um, additive synthesis for these complex sounds. Now, um, by changing the speed of this LFO, we can change the rate that this is being played back. Uh, which is really fun for drum loops as well. Of course you don't have to use an LFO here. Um, you could choose a sequencer as well and then you could step to various like random positions inside that. Um, yeah, random positions basically. So it's going to jump to different points in the loop and then uh, stay static there for a while. Um, actually, let's use that, that might be fun. Yeah, so because the speed was set, it actually doesn't freeze it. So if you set the speed to 100, it will also automatically move this sort of control on the background. If you set it to zero, it will actually be static. Um, so with that speed set, it will be a little bit less clicky. Now, um, with these harmonic controls, we can do a lot of fun stuff, like we can emphasize the um, fundamental. If you set this to 100%, you will only hear the fundamental. Um, we can only hear the octaves. Uh, we can sort of emphasize the odd or the even partials and the fifths. So there are almost no fifths in there. Now with the number of partials here, we set the number in total that we want to use. And that refers to this list again that we, that we see here. Um, so basically here what happens is the, the lowest um, partial, that's our fundamental, and it's the lowest tone as well. The higher you go up, the, the, the brighter and the higher it gets. So this basically acts as a filter because it will filter out any, in this case, partials above like 41. So if we set this lower still, the sound becomes duller. Um, now then we have uh, another box of effects here for some beating, stretch, shift. These are all frequency based effects. Um, I like this beating one. Let's modulate that with a bit of a um, vibrato like LFO. So we'll set an LFO to about 5 Hertz and we'll give it a very small amount. It's 
quite a subtle effect. And then we can go for some stereo stuff here. So let's say uh, spread, for example, um, which will sort of just modulate like the, the partial stereo stereo position with the rate here. And then with the ramp, we can um, keep the low frequencies um, sort of mono. Or the same at least. Now with this pitch variation knob, if you look here in the um, uh, tuning window, pitch variation will basically set this all to zero. So if you um, set that all the way down, there will be no pitch variations. So the sound becomes more stable. All right, so that's all good fun. But now let's see if we can use this with one of the um, FM filters. So I'm gonna choose in source A here. FM and then I'm double click that to set that to C to tune that filter to C and then I'm going to go for my key follow and divide this value so that it's C two octaves down. That doesn't necessarily sound good. Let's try um, setting, like not modulating the position, but just setting a custom position. So I'll set the speed down for now. So I'm starting to like that better. I think this spread is a little bit extreme. I think that starts to sound pretty cool. So I'm gonna use um, some other some other filters to stabilize this tuning further. So I'm going to send filter one to effect bus A, and then I'm gonna choose a multi-mode filter there. And um, in there, I'm going to choose one of the comb filters because they do a great job at tuning stuff. So I'm going to take the same approach there where I'm going to um, let this listen to my keys and I'll tune that down. 131. Like that, I think that's pretty cool. Um, then after that, this, this uh, let's let's set a multi-mode filter, um, another one, and for this one, I'm going to choose a regular low-pass filter, and I'm going to modulate that with what should we do? Let's choose an MSEG, and I'll sync that. I'll just create some filter plugs here. And I'll make sure that loops as well. Actually, my project is in 6.8, so I'm going to give this three bars instead of two.
then I'll set another MSCG under mix here so that at the end of the phrase um, it's going to set the mix down. I'll make this twice as long so I'll make that six bars and I'll set up a loop for that and we can double click this to view the whole thing um, and then at the end of the phrase I'm gonna let it open the mix briefly so that we hear the sort of original sound um, let's say somewhere here and then I'll invert the modulation of that actually I don't need to invert that Just set my release a little bit shorter. Now we could actually try this with chords as well. I'm now using a single note, um, but I also have some chords here. Let's see what that sounds like. Um, might sound very horrible. Actually sounds pretty nice. Let's try it with an arpeggiator. So we have a lot of variation there with the position control, which I like. Um, now to sort of finalize this, let's choose a small reverb, smallish. Um, and let's choose some uh, delays uh, which we can filter using a separate filter for the left and the right channel. Let's choose uh, the bandpass filters. What you could actually do here is with these um, the filters here in um, in the delay, you can also set them up as comb filters, which can be very cool. Um, actually, let's let's just try that. Um, let's go for a comb there. Um, so now we have to be a little careful um, because delay and comb, comb filter is actually already a delay. So this can get scary pretty quickly. Um, but let's just see what happens. So we'll set up two different comb filters with um, two key follows, one for the left, one for the right. We'll tune them both. And um, I'll actually make a little different tuning difference there. So I'll set this one to 31 and this one is to 32. And then and it needs to be a comb as well. Okay, let's see what happens. So yeah, that gets ex that gets uh, pretty extreme. Let's see if we can dim that down a little bit. We set the feedback a little bit lower. Maybe the rate a little bit slower. Um, let's set it to. Um, dotted quarter notes. Um, we could also filter the input to this. That makes it, um, if you 
cut away some of the low frequencies um, often makes it easier to work with. So we could choose a high pass filter just before that one. And while we're at it, let's try one of the wave shaper effects as well. Um, just shape some waves. I set this to a very low mix. Let's send that whole thing through a um, convolution reverb, and there will be the sort of the final touch. Um, we can go for the drum transformers. I always like those. Um, or we could try the, and I'm just gonna choose a new one there. Or we could try the drone tones. They already have a pitch. Um, they're right here. Um, but sometimes that works out great. use that a little bit on the background so we'll high pass filter that as well so we don't get any um, low frequencies in there just by itself that is going to sound like this all right and then um, we'll have to dry fully open and just a small wet amount
that's it guys uh thanks for watching see you in another video the pyramind mentorship network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production sound design music business and more use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want pick your mentor find a day and time that works best for you then book your session your appointment will be confirmed instantly study only what you want progress at your own pace pay as you go and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio our global network of industry experts are here to help you visit pyramind.com mentorship to get started